Chen, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Year of the Tiger. Year of the Tiger, and for me, a year of the duck, the pork, and the dumpling. <laughs> I am so excited to have you here, and I'm just beginning to say Chen Lai is one of my favorite restaurants to celebrate and to engage with and just to eat at. So it is super exciting for me to be here with you. Before I jump into your story, I want to know what you brought us here today. Well, um, some were your suggestions, but uh, I brought some of our, um, you know, we have an ever-changing menu. Uh, I used to change the menu every day. And what Chinese restaurant does that, right? Because it used to be the same menu. You yeah. walk across the street, walk across America and order broccoli, beef, and sweet and sour pork. But uh, I think Chinese food should be more farm to table like anything else. Like your mom probably went to the market in the morning shopped and cooked that night right? exactly and my mom did the same my grandmother and so I, we're in chinatown we have the bounty of the bay area so i always change uh items on the menu uh, some of these things are things that uh, uh stayed on the menu to become sacred cows mm. so we have some dumplings and uh two of them actually a uh, brief description this is our number one seller this is the uh, Shanghai Shenzhen Bao. We just call it short for SJB, you know, like XLB because Shalom Bao, right? Yeah. So if you Google SJB, you actually will see that. It's pretty, pretty cool. Very cool. Uh, we've sold over a million orders already. <laughs> and uh, and I got this idea because I have business in Shanghai and mm -hmm. in there's every street corner. Mm -hmm. There's a famous place called Yang's Fried Dumpling. And there's a little queue down the street every day. And they've expanded since then. but. I used to go there and, and just wait in line and get these hot uh, Sinjian Bao. And, you know, they cook a traditional way with a lot of lard. So <laughs> you, you, you can get hot and burn yourself. So I adopted the recipe a little bit. So they're, uh, they're still got this beautiful crunchy bottom, but they're flipped upside down. You see, most of them mm -hmm. have the clothes on top, but we fry them upside down like gangs. And the uh, pork is called about the pork, which is, you know, one of the better yeah. Korean porks. And it's juicy inside, so it's like a better pasta cook. So when you eat it, you, you get like a, Jeez. not quite a soup dumpling, but you get that, uh, you know, soft. It's not a fully leavened bread, so it's the thinner skin. It's not like bready, right? So it's, people just love it. And then we serve it with our chili bean sauce and vinegar, which this is just a blender. And I'll talk about the sauces later, but this is our number one seller. Uh, number two, uh, right up there, is our you know everybody has peking duck yes. and you know most Chinese restaurants charge even mom and pop restaurants charge a lot for it yeah so and when you order a whole duck it's like oh my god what else am i going to eat order because it's already spent 40 50 bucks um but here what i do is i take the duck in the pmpe style which i don't fully take the skin off i render the duck so the skin is crispy now it's been sitting here for a while so you can't really tell and we serve it this is key we serve it in this sesame biscuit so you see, it's actually like a salt bean. Right. Right? Oh, this is not warm anymore. Mm -hmm. So you then got to come to the restaurant. Of course. Um, and you put the duck in there with the house-made bean sauce. The bean sauce is came in chum, but it's also got preserved plum in there. So, you know, people talk about duck sauce. Mm -hmm. Like, in the old days, that duck sauce was kind of like a marmalade orange yeah. color. It's not really, I mean, you know, they, they just name stuff. But real... Uh, some people use hoisin sauce, which is just a marketing term for bean sauce, you know, hai shenzhang, right? So we actually blend all our own sauces and we put the bean sauce in the biscuit with the scones and the cucumber and it's like a duck sandwich. I love it. And people just come in yes. and eat duck sandwich. I mean, they, they just, I mean, it's a huge seller. And, <sighs> and uh, on the end there is, uh, uh, it's also a very classic Sichuan dish and um, with the chili oil and vinegar and a little sesame paste in there. And the secret to that is the Sichuan dish, so it has to have the ma flavor, right? So we actually bring in our own Sichuan peppercorn from Sichuan every two months. And the Qing Hua Zhao, the green one, is the one that numbs your tongue. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if they put a lot on there today, but because, you know, we're, we're doing this here. But um, uh, when you eat that, you get that spicy tingling flavor. So Hong Yu Cao So, I call that Sichuan Working Engine name I came up with, like Cao So, right? Working mm -hmm. Engine. And then in the middle, um, as a dish that actually uh, wouldn't quite look like this because the basil has to be glazed in a hot wok. 
So it's not just laying, uh, you know, flatly on, on top. It's, you know, it's just for the camera. But uh, this is a dish that I actually created when I was a beetle nut, the, my first restaurant in 1995. And it's... Um, you know, Taiwan uses a lot of basil. Well, China uses basil. China's a huge country. Right. So they use lots of stuff. So, you know, if you go into Yunnan and places like that, they, they definitely use basil. In Taiwan, you know, San Beiji, three cup chicken, one of the key ingredients is basil. Yeah. So this is uh, a glazed rib with some tamarind, which is, you know, uh, uh, more used in Thai cuisine, but also China uh, adapted. So we have some uh, glazed ribs and, uh, and basil. And, and a tamarind glaze. Uh, just some items here. We have a, a lots of things, you know, weren't able to do that. But as I said, Francis, so you know, you got to come to China Live and check it out. Well, absolutely. I'm a big fan of it. And now you told me that this, this is what I think one of the things is super amazing is you actually came up with every one of the recipes right down to the sauce yourself. Uh, yeah, well, um, this that's my talent. You know, I, I've always been uh, involved with food and um, have a talent for it, I guess. And I think people get misinterpret Chinese food as their perception of it. You know, they think, oh, it's, it's got to be authentic. You know, look, uh, authentic is a, kind of a bad word mm -hmm. uh, because um, I think you have to cook with integrity and, uh, and reverence to the culture and history. Right, so you can't really uh, say authentic because the thing is to your grandmother, like if you have shaman and oh, yeah, okay, so go for it. You must be hungry. I, I'm, I'm gonna, right. while you're eating, I'm going to serve myself and serve you. And, and no, I, I'm good. I you ate sure? earlier. Yeah, I'm okay. good. Thank you, Francis. I'll have two. Uh, besides, if I start eating chili, I start sweating, and then uh, Ethel over there is gonna get mad. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, so, um, you know, a uh, lot. Of, all the recipes uh, are, are, are interpretations because we're in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. they, like, I don't know if anybody that actually brings their own Sichuan peppercorns in, right? And I can so, taste the difference. Right yeah, there, right? uh, yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we try to be, uh, uh, I think all great cuisine is somewhere interpretive. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but, you know, authentic is like your grandmother's recipe. You don't want to say that's authentic. You know, like I was talking earlier, Shalombao was invented in Nanshan, just outside Shanghai, between Shanghai and Nanjing. Right. And, uh, but the Thai film made it more, most famous from Taiwan. So which one's authentic, right? right? I mean, if you're authentic, you want to be authentic to the entire phone, then you want to maybe get a partnership with them by franchise, but they don't franchise, but, but uh, they're super successful, right? So I think authentic, is a misused word, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you look at Italian food from 30 years ago, uh, was that authentic? You know, and now Italian food is respected. And another thing is a lot of people don't respect Chinese food because they perceive it to come in this white box with a mystery brown sauce. Right. And it's gotta be cheap, big portions, right. and probably unhealthy. And that's that's not our food, really. I mean, there's a lot of good Chinese American food, okay, mm -hmm. made well. But if, you know, look at China today. It's expanded, it's got a powerful economy and culture. And when people have money, they are going to go, you know, Chinese love to eat. Mm -hmm. you know, we leave, we, we'll, we'll eat anything with a back to the heavens, as yes. they say, right? Yes. So, <laughs> so with that, you have chefs getting paid more. And in the last 20, 30 years, the food has really elevated. You know, in the early days, most of the famous chefs went to Taiwan after, you know, the, um, you know, the communist takeover. But, uh, you know, now, some of the best food is coming from there. Mm -hmm. And in the West, we still don't get the respect. So my really primary objective is to change that perception. Mm. You know, um, use the best ingredients, have a beautiful environment, good service. We even have our own wines that we make up in Sonoma. And the sauces, you know, uh, I don't want to have, uh, you know, nothing wrong with people. I don't think you just want to like, do that and, and, and have the, perpetuate the same bad myth right. about Chinese food. You take more pride. Oh, well, right? aren't we prou proud about our cuisine? I mean, I think Chinese food is one of the greatest cuisines. I was just in Paris a few days ago. And I love, I love food from there. I and mean, I traveled the world. Uh, uh, I was a judge for a very famous organization for five years. And I just resigned, so I can talk about it now. So I've eaten that over. 500 or more Michelin restaurants 
around the world and the world's 50 best. And so, uh, you know, I, when, you, when you travel, you learn, yeah. right? Because there's some, people are very creative uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, Hong Kong's evolved again. Singapore's got great restaurants always, not just street food. Right. And so there's a lot for Chinese food to evolve to. And we're just doing our little piece here in San Francisco. You know, China Live uh, was a very ambitious project, you know, 20 million investment, big place. But we were, you know, either restaurant of the year and the highest grossing restaurant in the Bay Area. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. So I love the fact that your mission here is to bring back and elevate the the proper place of China cuisine where it should be. Absolutely. Of where, why do you think, and I talked to you a little about this, but earlier on, but why do you think we start off where we did in terms of, oh, it's all about value. It has about value. And why did we stay there for so long still? Well, I think, you know, when, when the Chinese American experience, you know, as immigrants came here, I mean, you look at mushu pork and, and mm -hmm. dishes like that, you don't really find that in China. I mean, they had to, you know, chop suey is basically kitchen sink zha right? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, multiple stories about how it was invented. But San Francisco Chinatown is where most of that Chinese experience, the food started, mm -hmm. you know, the egg for youngs. But they all had a cultural context. They just got involved and then it became a wonderful, delicious food that everybody enjoyed. It was what they called the first empire cuisine. There's a famous author, Chen, who wrote a book about, about this, that, uh, you know, even a hundred years ago, there were, you know, 50,000 Chinese restaurants. And today there's 50,000 Chinese restaurants, more than Starbucks, uh, you know, uh, Pizza Hut and, you know, uh, McDonald's combined, right? 50,000 a lot. Every yeah. little town across America probably has a little whole right. lot Chinese restaurant, maybe not a McDonald's, right? And that's how we all kind of a lot of our families grew up here working in restaurants. Mm -hmm. I, I did mm -hmm. when I came here when I was uh, 10 years old. And uh, uh, when I went to college, before I even went to college in high school, I worked in restaurants just to put myself through school. Even though my father was a career diplomat and my grandfather was a provincial governor in China. You know, wow. it's an immigrant story. Yeah. So when we came here into food, uh, it was uh, meant to be sustenance and, and it was approachable. Like mm -hmm. everybody loved Chinese food, and mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, if it's not broken, why well, fix it? So what mm -hmm. happens is it become like the, you know, the the pizza and the, you know, the Italian food and then Chinese the, in the white box. Well, we're a little bit more than that, you know, with our, mm -hmm. how yeah. much we love food. Yeah. And Chinese food is one of the most complex cuisines in the world. Uh, when it's done right, it's fabulous. And, and also, you know, you have to, and, and people want value, right? Mm -hmm. So. What happens is, you know, most restaurants are like in Monterey Park, you know, I remember the days where like, oh, they're selling that dish for nine ninety five. Well, the restaurant across the says, well, I'm going to do the same dish because they have the same menu for eight ninety five. And what happens is you just race to the bottom. And then what happens is you got more filler ingredients and, and things uh, don't get better. Oh, you know, oh. uh, I have a, I always tell the story like people come in and says, I can't believe you charge 20 bucks for chow mein. Well, those, Shanghai fat noodles are made custom for me by a local uh, noodle company. And I, uh, I, I toss that with uh, baby shrimps and pork and fresh vegetables. And it's a big, healthy portion. And uh, mm -hmm. it's a big seller. And uh, for 20 bucks, people go, oh, that's just crazy. And you get half the portion possible on eggs and a meat sauce and yeah. nobody complains, right? I think there's a misconception about what our food should be. And so we need to change that. And especially with the oh. early Chinese Americans that have been here because they always like, you know, if you get, I, I answer every Yelp review, which is crazy, right? As busy as I am. And a lot of them are like, oh my God, it's so expensive. And I, like, look, we pay, we don't pay on the table. We pay better than most restaurants. We they have healthcare, they have breaks, they have, you know, vacations, whatever. In a beautiful environment, my restaurant is all custom. It's as beautiful as any restaurant anywhere, okay? And our rents are, you know, well, I don't even tell you about that. But, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, when you have all that, and we use premium ingredients. Uh, you know, we, we have our own farm in Petaluma before, the, before COVID. And my wife and I used to get up on Saturday, Sunday morning at 6 a.m. Oh, my God, it's like crazy late. I just I can't do it anymore. But, and you couldn't find uh, help, farm right. help, because... 
you know, with the with the COVID, a lot of them left, and uh, so you know when you when you can have ingredients and bring it to the table. Okay, now those are cold, but if they were hot, you would I would tell you be careful because you know be careful, be careful because you will actually burn burn yourself. And we serve a little bit of this chili vinegar. Mm. Just there Thank you, you go. You said you use kabuta pork in this. Kabuta pork, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so it's it's cold, but you know what? We we have ghost kitchens now because during COVID, we decided that we needed to, uh, to expand our geographical footprint, mm -hmm. and even our ghosts are going to call it Channel Life Signatures. Like mm -hmm. in San Jose, you can get it. And we developed a method that you can actually get that pretty close to what you would get at the restaurant. It's delicious. Wow. It's very delicious. You're being kind. Uh, no, it's so you good. You know, I'm very, very particular about it. But uh, these are the little things that we do every day uh, to differentiate ourselves mm -hmm. from the marketplace. and. And, uh, you know, I, I think you have to, you know, we're in America, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're not just selling to, I uh, hate to say, it, just the local Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're in America, there's all kinds of necessities here. So why not have other people appreciate your food at the, at the same level as Italian or Japanese food? Absolutely. I mean, everybody with Japanese food, all Makazi place. Uh, so, so it's a mission that's uh, incomplete, but... We're kind of on our way. I think we're making uh, headwinds. We have a few minutes left in the interview, but I do want to ask you one key question. I know a lot of my friends are always excited about getting into the food industry. What advice would you give up and coming entrepreneurs who want to get, especially the Asian ones, who want to actually break out and do something that's different from what they saw their grandparents and parents do? Like what, what type of advice? And, well, and, and it comes from passion and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, if you have an idea, uh, I mean, there's a lot of regional cuisine. If you go down to uh, you know East Broadway in New York, you see all kinds of uh, uh, regional Chinese cuisine, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're into wine and make wine, or you forgot to oh, talk yes. about your favorite duck fat popcorn. Uh, by the way, three of our products are chili crisp, chef Chen chili crisp, the chili bean sauce, which uh, and you love it because I love this. The, it's almost like a and jam. It has fermented fava, mm -hmm. black bean, and soybeans in there. And then chili crisp is made with fresh fried shallots, unlike a lot of other, you know, using dry shallots. And our duck fat popcorn one for good food was just sustainably produced, more was all about being a green environment. Mm -hmm. you, you, ha you have to pay a little bit more for ingredients when you keep that in mind, right? Right. And that duck fat popcorn, you, you know, since we don't have much time, uh, you pop it open and try one because you said you've been dying to try it uh, for okay. a while, right? It's actually made with uh, uh, Liberty Ducks from Sonoma. And the ducks are almost $30 a piece wholesale. Wow. And it's savory. Oh, wow. There's uh, made literally with, mm. why do we come mm. up with this? Because we sell a lot of ducks. And, um, we actually started out by using duck fat to make a drink called sometimes old fashioned duck fat washed. Right? It's the process of fat washed. And, it, and that drink was like number one in cocktail like three years ago when it came out in the country. It was like everything I love in a bite right here. And then we had a lot of duck fat. I said, okay, the, the drink thing worked. Why not duck fat? And because, you know, I mean, Louis in Paris has duck fat fries. And we all know about duck fat fries. Why not duck fat popcorn? Mm. Especially peaking duck. <laughs> he can't stop eating. I'm sorry, well, I'm, not, I'm not even hearing anything you're saying. I'm just eating. <laughs> uh, but you see chunks of uh, duck. I do. I taste right? it too. And it's, it's addictive, yeah. It is I'm so going to change the packaging because people say, you know, it's not resealable. So I end up eating the whole thing and oh my God, you know, so because I want to have some tomorrow. So we're, we're involving it. Now that it's become so popular, um, uh, you know, everything is made in a house right now at my restaurant. It's a big place, 30,000 square feet, but uh, but eventually, you know, I think this is a product that can go national. I think so too. You yeah. need to make this national. Yeah. This is long overdue. We're out of time, but thank you so much for bringing an amazing banquet. I love this. I'm going to take this back home with me. And uh, your crew and uh, yourself are invited to China Life thank Company you. on Broadway in San Francisco. We are going to be there. Thank you so much yeah. for literally bringing the entire feast here. Yeah, thank and you. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.